NVIDIA's been stealing frames from you all along, but not really, only recently when they've been trying to make a little bit more money. Tesla, shipping without USB ports and crashing. Ah, who could have thought? And AMD showing off its APU that's gonna go into the Steam Deck. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. So let's start off talking about this initial article, which is about NVIDIA silently taking frames away from paying customers with the NVIDIA G. GeForce Now Founders membership. NVIDIA claiming that while the majority of games on GeForce Now run at a solid 1080p 60, there are 12 games, however, that can only run at the specified frame rates that you see here, either between 45 and 50 FPS. This has come about because somebody on Reddit actually reported this to NVIDIA when they noticed that the new Guardians of the Galaxy game was capped at 50 frames per second, to which NVIDIA came back and said, no, nah, that's not a bug. Even when you decrease the settings where you would theoretically be able to get it up to 60 FPS, you don't get that up to 60 FPS anymore, even though you might enable DLSS, which would bring it up to 60. We're not gonna allow you to play on 60. That's not a bug, it's a feature. Thank you for paying your $10 a month. We're gonna take that, enjoy it, and you're not gonna get the full benefit of your service. To which people have responded, okay, well, NVIDIA GeForce now does state that it's up to 1080p 60 FPS, so that's like, uh, yeah, up to is obviously a term that could potentially be construed into meaning that they don't have to deliver that to you. However, there are other reports from paying customers who are indicating that this didn't actually used to be this way, and then this is a degradation of the service. So the fact that they're capping the frame rate now and within the last month or two after they debuted their super expensive $200 a year RTX 3080 membership on GeForce Now is when people are actually now starting to see that this frame rate limit's actually starting to happen so that you would have a reason, a financial reason to upgrade. Why do you need to upgrade when it's 1080p 60 on Cyberpunk, huh? Why, why would you need to pay NVIDIA $200 a year? You're paying them $120 a year. That's. That's not enough for them, apparently. Obviously, there are multiple sides of this coin. NVIDIA is advertising up to, which means they could be delivering you 1080p 1 FPS, and you should just shut up and enjoy your cake because you're getting up to, my friends. But then there is the other side that it does seem to be that these frame rate limits are a newer feature that NVIDIA is starting to roll out on their service as they're trying to garner more money. If you're a paying subscriber for GeForce Now, does this bother you? Are you going to cancel your membership? I read through this Reddit thread and it did seem to piss off a few people in there who are going to be downgrading their memberships because of this. So I wanna hear from you. If you're actually a paying NVIDIA GeForce Now subscriber, does this bother you? Because as somebody who has the Founders membership, it kind of bothers me that I can't downgrade the settings and then also get 1080p 60 FPS. If it's just capped because they're d giving me a capped frame rate, not for any logistical reason that they can actually communicate. They say it's the hardware, but if I drop the software settings, then I still can't get above that frame rate limit. That kind of seems like a bullcrap move to me. But I want to hear from you guys down below in the comments. But speaking of things that have fewer features than others, this one makes a little bit of sense because you're going to be paying a little bit less. There's new indications that Intel's B660 mid-tier motherboard might not have PCI Express 5.0 support for Alder Lake in a way to cut costs. This makes a ton of sense, just like B450 with AMD never got PCI Express 4.0. However, when they did on BIOS supports and then AMD forced those companies to pull those BIOSes, that was kind of a shady move, but it does make a little bit of sense that it's not being rolled out on the mid-tier boards as a brand new technology. Helps to cut a few costs. Were you excited for B660 having PCI Express 5.0? I wanna hear from you. Were you excited for the GTA Remaster Trilogy? I know that there was a lot of crap of people looking at the trailers and being like, that looks like bad, which I honestly didn't think it did because it was a remaster, not a remake. We weren't supposed to be getting all of these revolutionary graphics. It did seem like a decent upgrade, but when it launched last week, it was a giant kerfuffle of nonsense with Rockstar inevitably having to pull the game from the Rockstar launcher on the PC because uh, non-disclosed reasons, it was for maintenance and it was only supposed to take 24 hours, but as of the time of recording, it's still not back up. And according to the reports that I've read, it's because they actually had all of the original songs from the original trilogies in the PC files, but because they didn't pay the licensing fees to include them into the remaster, they didn't actually have them unlocked in the remaster, but just including them with the game files means that they likely have to pay those fees. And so instead of doing the right thing, which is checking the game before you actually launch it, 
you know, and making sure everything's fine. Uh, they pulled it from everybody who paid for the game on the Rockstar launcher on PC, and now they actually can't play a game that they paid for, regardless of all the other graphical glitches that have been popping up all over the internet. Burn it, fool! Hey, get yourself a beer or something. I'll catch up with you. There's also been tons of reports of Battlefield 2042 not performing particularly well, which is not, not great, but the game that did launch, I think last week or within the last couple of weeks, Forza Horizon 5 seems to be going off mostly without any horrific issues. Let's talk about another thing though that uh, is having some hiccups when it comes to its launch, the Pixel 6, not without a chair of controversies. Number one, there's a Google Photos update that removes the magic eraser feature from Pixel 6, which is like one of the main selling points that Google's used in their marketing. They updated an app and now you can't use it. It's supposed to be getting a fix sometime soon. They're identifying and going to bring Magic Eraser back in case you want that. But they also sent out a large Android 12 1.8 gigabyte updates to Pixel 6 users who already have Android 12. And then they were like, just, just kidding. Just ignore it. You don't need to update it. But what you can ignore is that when you let your Pixel 6, at least according to anecdotal reports that are popping up across the internet, if you let it drain the battery completely, you can no longer use the fingerprint scanner after booting it up again. The only way to get the fingerprint scanner back after draining your battery completely is to factory reset the device, which is just software glitches galore, my friends. It's a good week to just sit back and watch all of these companies gloriously self-destruct on themselves. Although the Pixel 6 thing is not such a big deal in my opinion. But I got another one. You want another company that's not giving you the features you're paying for? Tesla, shipping cars without USB ports in the latest Model 3 and Model Ys that have been being delivered as of November 11th. Reports are coming out showing that there are just holes in their cars, the cars that they paid, this guy paying $70,000 for a Model Y performance, starting at like $55,000 for a Model Y. You're paying for this, but you're getting no USB ports. Tesla coming out and saying, oh, that's just because of chip shortages. We can't deliver it to you. But certain service centers are informing the customers ahead of time and saying, hey, when you take delivery, it's not gonna have USB ports. We're gonna install these in December as soon as we get some. Whereas others are just like, you got no USB ports, shut up and enjoy your $70,000 Kerchu vehicle, all right? This is on you. You want a USB port? You should have bought it yourself. Also, this means that the wireless charger in the vehicle doesn't work either, which not a great scenario to have no way of charging your phone in your car, but I'm curious. I've read the response to this on the internet and it does seem like people are just like, yeah, there's a chip shortage. Would you rather not get a car at all? You just suck it up and take it. Whereas other people are just like, it's a $70,000 vehicle. They should at least disclose this and make sure that there are service appointments to get it installed because there's been a history of Tesla just removing features upon delivery, not disclosing it, and then them never getting installed after the fact. So whether or not they're gonna come through on this, who knows, maybe? But I wanna hear from you. Hypothetically, if you had a Model 3, Model Y that's getting delivered today, you've been waiting seven months for it because you had to place an order back when they were backlogged. Seven months, you get there, no USB ports. You take in that car, you're being like, no, piss off Tesla, don't drop the glass. I'm not taking this car. And then you have to wait another year to get another one because Hertz is buying 100,000 of them. But let's stay on the Tesla train and talk about the first full self-driving beta crash that happened in California that's being investigated by the NHTSA. The driver of the vehicle, I guess the person sitting in the driver's seat was in a Model Y on November 3rd and crashed in LA and the vehicle has severe damage. According to the report, the vehicle was in full self-driving beta mode and while taking a left turn, the car went into the wrong lane and they were hit by another driver in the lane next to them. The car gave an alert halfway through the turn, so they tried to turn the wheel to avoid it from going into the wrong lane, but the car by itself took control and forced itself into the incorrect lane, creating an unsafe maneuver, putting everyone involved at risk. The car is severely damaged on the driver's side. So that's the report coming from the driver. But according to other people who are in the full self-driving beta program, they, it's also possible for them to experience times where the wheel doesn't actually give them back control 
because of the torque that's being applied to on tight turns, it doesn't register their hand movement. In this case, somebody applying 20 to 50 pounds of steering force to override it and the car not really allowing that to happen. There are other overrides that you can use like tapping the brake, but obviously if you're in a panic situation of your car going to crash, it's not necessarily thought that you're going to respond immediately, especially when the car was already in self driving mode. I can understand why it happened. Obviously the driver is 100% responsible for the action from an insurance point of view. But it does beg the question, do you trust Tesla's out on the road knowing that the driver might not be behind the wheel? Although, did you trust it when people were behind the wheel? Just don't trust people on the road, friends. And don't trust this episode of Hot News without crypto stonks, because what would Hot News be without a crypto stonks update? So let's do it. Bitcoin up 1.25% on the day to be at 65,829, sitting a little low of its all time high of 68,990, but increasing significantly from its low point in the last 24 hours of $63,000. Ethereum also up minusculely, 4688 is where it's sitting right now. Dogecoin up roughly 1% to be at 26 cents. Switching over to the meme stonks, GameStop closing down on Friday, 1.09% to close the week at 202.10, and AMC up 1.37% to close at $40 even. But news coming out about AMC that they are now going to allow you to buy movie tickets using cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin Cash, and Litecoin will now be accepted on online purchases with AMC. It doesn't look like you're gonna be able to purchase anything in the theater with cryptocurrency, but at least online purchases can now be made with cryptos with what The Verge is calling the king of the meme stocks, which I don't agree with. I, I feel like GameStop's more of the king of the meme stocks than AMC is, but you you guys argue over that down below in the comments. Let me know what's the king. Stay on the crypto side of things, Discord kind of teased out on the internet that they were gonna potentially bring in some crypto integration as well as NFT integration to which the response to that was not great across the internet. The founder of Discord tweeting a mock-up showing that there might be integration for MetaMask on Discord to which they came out and said, we appreciate all the perspectives we've been hearing. It's an internal concept. If we're not exploring this right now, we're excited about the potential of Web3 tech, but just chillax, okay? Don't scare me for the fact that I tweeted a picture that could have easily been Photoshopped, okay? Freds, honestly, as a user of Discord, I don't necessarily see anything wrong with them bringing in this integration. Obviously, this doesn't mean that people are going to use it, but having the option to potentially even purchase Discord Nitro while using Ethereum could make some sense. Who knows, what do you think of Discord potentially integrating with some blockchain stuff? I wanna hear from you down below in the comments. Speaking of integrating things, Spotify integrating audiobooks. This is just part of their march to just become exactly like Audible and Audible trying to become exactly like Spotify and them mixing and mashing things together to create this confusion of what each is supposed to do, but Spotify now having an audiobook company that they're acquiring to further. They're not music, they're not just podcasts, they're audiobooks. It's the entire listening experience. And on Friday, did you listen to Valve and AMD talk about the upcoming Steam Deck? Number one, probably not, because it got delayed, so that probably, you know, moistened your luster for the actual device. But then number two, they had horrific technical difficulties where they tried to stream it on their own platform, but they couldn't handle the bandwidth. So then eventually, after like an hour and a half, two hours, they had to switch over to YouTube, which was just like, why wouldn't you use a third-party service in the first place? Did you really think you could handle the hype of people trying to watch this event? Anyways, we got more details of the upcoming Aerith SOC that's gonna be featured into the Steam Deck. Four cores, as we know, eight threads, RDNA 2 from 2.4 to 3.5 gigahertz. It's gonna have a TDP from four to 15 watts and Valve saying that the device should perform the same whether it's on power or it's on battery, which is something that's really great to hear and that there shouldn't be really any throttling that happens except for maybe if you go outside on a hot summer day where that's gonna happen. With Valve also indicating that they really want games to have an FPS limit in order to help conserve on battery life because that's how you're gonna do it. It's not because once you unplug it, it's gonna cut the power to the chip. You really need to focus on an FPS limiter and that at some point there will be a global FPS limiter that's rolled out to the Steam OS that's gonna be part of it. Also showing off the LPDDR5 memory. It's gonna have 16 gigabytes with one gigabyte of dedicated for the GPU. And then also showing off that game load times and boot times 
based on whether or not you're on the NVMe or the SD card. Honestly, not horrifically that far apart, 18% slower on the SD card for game loading times and 25% slower on the EMMC when it comes to boot times of the device, but not like not unusable. Also indicating that Steam Deck's gonna have support for two 4K screens at 60 hertz and that the cable will have up to 45 watts of charging. And again, we're expecting this to ship out in February, 2022. Honestly, it made me a bit more excited. It does seem like Valve is really trying to get this to be like one of the best PC personal computer consoles that's out there. I'm excited for the Steam Deck, despite the delay. Let me know what you think of it down below in the comments. And let me know what you think of hot news being back on UFD Tech. I didn't make the video explaining why it's happening. I just, after trying to record it multiple times, I just felt like it wasn't good enough to be a standalone video. A lot of people might think it's because the views are down on hot news and that's really not the case. And a lot of people have said that is because uh, YouTube tried to take down UFD Tech. And although that was part of the initial decision to bring hot news over to its own channel. Really, it's because I think the brands are two separate things. UFD Tech is not hot news necessarily, but after doing it for a year on its own channel, I really felt like I just can't handle running two channels as a person. I don't have it in me. My team is no longer here in America with me and I just, have to run one channel now, and that is why Hot News is back here on UFD Tech. So with that being said, I'll catch you for breakfast tomorrow, my friends, for some more Hot News. Cheers.